A young girl attacks what she thinks is a slime, but it turns out to be an object that drops an item drop, revealing itself to be a human who entered the Esekai world. The human is Sato Ryata, who woke up after being reincarnated into this new world, commonly known as an Esekai. The girl intends to cut Ryata, who is still lying on the dungeon floor, completely bewildered as to why a slime dropped a human item when it died. Ryata is also perplexed by the situation and asks the girl, whose mental state seems uncertain at best. The girl then demonstrates how monster hunting, commonly referred to as Berburu monster in the dungeons, works. A slime suddenly appears and attacks the woman directly. She swiftly defeats the slime with a single blow of her large hammer and obtains an item called Bean Sprout. Ryata becomes even more confused upon seeing the bean sprout on the dungeon floor. The girl explains that level 1 slimes drop bean sprout, which she considers common knowledge in this new world but feels foreign to Ryata. As they continue walking through the dungeon, Ryata asks the girl whether they are still in Japan or at least on Earth, but she appears puzzled by his words and remains silent. Because Ryata is baffled by the idea of vegetables dropping from slimes, he asks the girl about it again, to which she only responds that it is a common occurrence in Telulu, a city or country within the Esekai. The girl further explains that the only monsters at level 1 are slimes, and to face other monsters, one must level up first to match them in strength. She admits that she is also only level 1 and feels too weak to confront other monsters. Ryata, however, doubts her explanation, but he considers that logic in another world might be beyond human comprehension, so he might eventually come to accept it as normal. After defeating several slimes, the girl finds a character status board, where she can see her combat abilities, health points, mono points, etc., just like in RPG video games we commonly play. Ryata recognizes that status boards often appear in the RPG video games he used to play, so he is not surprised by it. Observing Emily's status, he concludes that she is strong in combat but unlucky when it comes to obtaining drop items. Finally, Ryata tries to measure his own abilities on the status board, but to his disappointment, all his combat abilities are rated as F. However, the drop status shows that he obtains S-rated drop items, which are the highest rating in typical RPG video games. He is intrigued and decides to kill a slime, hoping to obtain drop items in accordance with the status board, and he succeeds. The bean sprout he receives as a drop item is significantly more than Emily's. Ryata's theory proves true, and Emily mentions that she has been exploring the dungeon for two years and has never seen anyone obtain drop items as much as Ryata. Finally, Ryata's stomach growls, and Emily invites him to eat. As they savor the stir-fried bean sprout prepared by Emily, they find the simple dish delightful and a perfect complement to alcoholic beverages like beer. Emily mentions that alcohol in Telulu is very expensive, and she can't afford it herself. She then serves Ryata a soup made from the same bean sprout ingredients, which brings tears of joy to Ryata's eyes as it reminds him of the warmth and companionship he has been missing. He opens up about his past, describing himself as an ordinary office worker who worked overtime without receiving any extra pay. He ended up collapsing and was hospitalized, but after recovering, he continued his usual routine of working overtime until he missed the last train home and had to sleep in the office. When he woke up, he found himself in the dungeon as a drop item from a slime. Ryata feels like his life was a daily hell, never receiving a decent salary. He breaks down in tears as he recalls this, but Emily immediately embraces him and offers some positive words of encouragement. Every person's efforts will bear fruit in the end, whether it happens quickly or slowly. Those who work hard will always be rewarded. Even if you work for a long time without getting anything in return, there will be a greater reward waiting. Time flies, and Ryata realizes that he needs a temporary place to stay while searching for drop items that can earn him more money. Emily, on the other hand, prefers sleeping in the dungeon as her income isn't substantial enough to afford lodging. She lends Ryata a bamboo spear as a temporary weapon while he looks for money and promises to return it after earning enough to rent a simple house. The currency in Telulu is Pilo, and every sale of a drop item results in payment according to the item's value. While hunting slimes to make money, Ryata also investigates food and lodging prices in Telulu, 
hoping to rest and eat without worrying about money shortages. After three days, he manages to rent an 87-year-old rundown house without any collateral, giving the key to Emily as a token of appreciation for the delicious soup she made and as a gesture of covering all the rental expenses. Emily feels hesitant and politely declines, knowing how hard Ryata worked for three days hunting slimes just to rent the house for her. Ryata insists on giving her the key as he is grateful for the warm and tasty soup she prepared and wants her to stay in the rented house. Seeing Ryata's dirty and injured hands covered in blood, with bags under his eyes from three sleepless days, Emily invites him to stay together in the rented house, and they can once again enjoy the soup she makes with her own hands. Ryata visits the Adventurer Guild's office to sell the results of his hunting to the guild staff there. Urza, who is weighing Ryata's hunt, suggests that he should level up to level 2 in the Tellulu dungeon to obtain the carriage drop item. She also informs him about a new dungeon that suddenly appeared and has become a hot topic among adventurers curious about its emergence. According to Urza, dungeons near the city sometimes appear seemingly out of nowhere without any visible signs. The group Neptune is said to be investigating the new dungeon to find out what drop items can be obtained there. The dungeon is called Nihonium, a name that Urza herself finds difficult to pronounce, but Ryata has no trouble with it since he comes from the human world that entered the Esekai, so the name poses no problem for him. As Ryata's adventure behind him starts to get frustrated due to waiting for a long time, he decides to leave the guild. Urza, who seems to have a clear fondness for Ryata, invites him to a newly opened shop, but he declines, citing important matters to attend to. This rejection disappoints Urza, and a senior of hers teases her, thinking her invitation was rejected because of her failed attempt to invite him to the new shop. When night falls, Ryata returns home and hopes to find someone welcoming him inside. Emily is there to greet him, and he is amazed to see the rented house in a clean and sparkling condition on all sides, thanks to Emily's efforts in cleaning it while he was away. Emily gives Ryata a warm towel, knowing that he must be feeling comfortable after a day of hunting, and she even prepares a warm cup of tea for him. Feeling guilty for having Emily do everything, Ryata suggests she should rest as she must be tired after cleaning the house. However, Emily's physical skills are above Ryata's, so it's not much of a problem for her. The next day, Ryata decides to enter the Nihonium dungeon out of curiosity since other adventurers couldn't obtain any drop items from there and deemed it empty. He challenges a skeleton warrior and successfully defeats it, obtaining HP Upseed that raises his HP level. He tries again and consistently receives HP Upseeds after killing monsters in the Nihonium dungeon. When he invites Emily to enter the dungeon while he fights the skeleton warrior, she doesn't get any items, similar to other adventurers. However, when Ryata gets an HP Upseed, Emily tries to take it but becomes transparent, indicating that only the one who kills the monster can claim the drop item. Ryata deduces that the Nihonium dungeon is designed for individuals with S-Class skill status like himself. While enjoying a meal at home, Ryata plans to explore Tellulu's second floor until the next day, but Emily stops him, fearing he might repeat his bad habits from his previous life. He promises not to do so and to return home before nightfall. On Tellulu's second floor, he is attacked by a drowsy slime with a higher level than those on the first floor, but Ryata doesn't feel any pain due to his HP status being ranked S. After defeating the slime, he obtains a giant-sized carrot as a drop item. When he's about to kill another attacking slime, a group of adventurers arrives and kills it before him. Upon checking Ryata's level, they laugh mockingly at him for having a lower level. Suddenly, a girl with rabbit ears appears behind Ryata, teasing him for his low level. After finishing the hunt for the giant-sized carrot, Ryata returns to the city, sells some of his hunt results, and earns more money than before. Upon arriving at home, Emily greets him with a giant carrot, wondering how they should cook it. The rabbit-eared girl appears behind Ryata again and continues to taunt him. However, she unexpectedly confesses that she likes Ryata, leaving him confused, and Emily wonders who the rabbit-eared girl is.